Hey guys, Joe here, and in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to take a 2012 MacBook Pro and bring it up into the 2019s with a couple of simple and inexpensive upgrades that are going to make your experience so, so much better. And that's coming to you right now. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for checking out this video. I greatly appreciate it. Click on the links down below if you want to use my Amazon affiliate links for some of the stuff I use in this video as well as maybe to help support the channel. Anything you can do to support the channel would be greatly appreciated because I'd like to do more and more stuff. This MacBook is a 2012 MacBook Pro Intel-based i5 system that belongs to my friend Daniel. He's the one that goes shooting with me, or I haven't been shooting in a long time, but he's the one I would go shooting with. And it works but it's doggy slow. And there's a couple of main reasons for that. Number one, this is a MacBook, so quite frankly, it didn't come with a whole lot of good stuff in it from the factory unless you wanted to overpay for it. So it only has four gigabytes of RAM. It also has a 5400 RPM spinning hard drive, which wasn't uncommon in 2012. SSDs weren't a big thing back then, but it still bites that it's a 5400 RPM hard drive. First thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little bit of footage of me booting it and you'll see that it takes literally forever. I think I died twice waiting for it to boot up. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a boot time test with the standard hard drive in it. So I am going to probably take 10 or 15 seconds off because I'm gonna to have to put in a password, but uh, that's no big deal. So here we go in three, two, one. At least the screen lights up right away. Take about 15 seconds off of that, you're talking about 240. It's still not even usable if I try to open like Chrome right now or Safari or anything that's on here. It doesn't work well. But you can see just right down here how bad the read writes are. Especially the write and it's pretty bad. Yeah, you can see it's still booting up. It's asking for passwords and such. I don't have all the passwords. My thing is I just want to get in, download the um, cloning software, and just get this thing done. So, yeah, next step is going to be to download Carbon Copy for Mac, and then I'm going to come back once I've started that. Once it booted up and the hard drive finally got done doing whatever the heck it was doing and the four gigabytes of RAM got done doing whatever it couldn't do, I was able to finally download Carbon Copy Cloner, which is a free trial software. Uh, you can buy it as well, but I only needed the trial because I'm only doing one clone. And I downloaded it and it's pretty simple. The biggest thing is you do need things like this. This is an external hard drive enclosure. This is a USB 3 model. You can get Thunderbolt and all that stuff, but this being a 2012 MacBook, it didn't have Thunderbolt, so there was no reason to pay for it. But yeah, once you just plug your, in this case, 256 gig oop, SSD into it, can't do that with the spinning hard drive, by the way, you'd probably break it. But once you have that plugged in, you can go ahead and start your clone, and that's what I'm doing here. It's going pretty well, and the end result is gonna be, he's gonna have a smaller hard drive, or SSD. It's only gonna be 256 gigs versus 500 gigs, but I'm giving him an external hard drive enclosure with the original hard drive. He just uses it for listening to music and watching some movies and uh, typing some documents and things like that. So it doesn't need to be the fastest thing in the world. By the way, I did try Super Duper. Carbon copy cloner seems to be easier for my brain to wrap around. But he only uses it for basic light usage. Uh, in fact, I actually found him a really good Asus ROG gaming laptop that he games on now. So. He wanted to make this more usable so that when he or his friend is using it, it's not a painful experience. And that's what we're doing. So I went on Amazon and I confirmed that this is the right RAM for this MacBook. This is eight gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM. 
and I'm just throwing in one of my 256 gig SSDs. If he wants a bigger one down the road or sometime in the future, I can just reclone the hard drive. But I'm thinking that with the SSD and the RAM upgrade, it should make this thing a lot more usable because this thing has an i5 processor. Granted, it's mobile i5, so it's two core, four threads, but it's still a i5 processor. It's not a Pentium, it's not a Celeron, it's not an Athlon. It's a fairly decent processor, even by today's standard, for what the use case is on this MacBook. But once this clone is done, I'm going to flip it over and I'll show you how to change your RAM and your storage drive. Here we are. It's been a few hours. I went and laid down for a little bit. But while I was sleeping, it completed the copy to the SSD. One thing you need to do when you're doing a clone on the MacBook using Carbon Copy Cloner is you are going to have to give permission. So. Keep that in mind if you're going to walk away for a while, it may not finish until you give full permissions in the application menus. It walks you through everything. It's so easy to do. Again, that's why I like the MacBook parts and the operating system. It's the company itself that I take umbrage with, so working on something used, I'm, I'm cool with that. But we now have it turned off. I'm going to go ahead and close the lid. Is that normal? Let me know if your hinges creak. But we're going to flip it over. And in the interest of saving time and energy, I already loosened the back panel. It's just all the screws going around the edge. They're very easy to spot. There's nothing hidden under the feet or anything like that. And let's get you in a little bit closer. And we'll take a look at what we're looking at. You guys remember when MacBooks were owner serviceable? Battery, don't touch that. Not even to bother disconnecting it. The chances of it starting up are infinitesimally small unless you manage to short something, which is not going to happen. In this corner is your hard drive. You just got to remove this bracket here using two screws and the RAM, which is right here. It's a little bit fiddly to get the bottom stick out while the battery is in, but it's not too terribly hard. Let's start with the drive. You just need a very small screwdriver and you just need to take out these two screws. And I'm using this thing because somehow I managed to misplace my ding dang uh, iFixit screwdriver because I'm awesome that way. Okay, so you do that, and they are semi captive screws, so you're not going to have to worry about losing them. But set that aside. Then you just pull up, and you'll see that it's held in with a ribbon cable. Go ahead and pop that one out. This is just, again, an $8 enclosure, but it does the job. I will give it credit, it holds the drive very nice and tight. Take your drive, connect it up, settle it on in, and congratulations, you are now in 2015 or newer. Ha ha ha, get it? Set your bracket back down, which will hold it down. Make sure you don't pinch your ribbon cable here and tighten your screw down. I do give credit to them for using Phillips screws for the majority of the easily removable parts. Just makes it easier when you're servicing your items. There are some tri-wing stuff down on the motherboard and underneath it, but again, we don't have to go that far. And the SSD is installed, so we'll just turn this a little bit and you can see the RAM sticks. These are just standard sodiums. Nothing fancy, it's just that they're Mac specific. These are two gigabyte sticks, each stick. There we go. And because of the angle of the battery, as you saw there, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to get that bottom stick out, but we're good to go. Ask me what happens when you smack a stainless steel sink with a knife. Here's a handy little storage tip. Even if you're not planning on using this RAM ever again, just put it in the case that the new stuff came in. That way it's easy to put away and it keeps it protected in case you do need to use it. Or if these don't work and you need to send it back, it's nice to have the packaging, but you will see that 
these have memory modules on both sides which allows it to have twice the capacity putting it in is as easy as lining it up you will have to go in again at an angle to get it past the battery work it in push down super simple super easy don't go in like as vertical as some people might think you would because you could damage the pins or most importantly you could damage the dim slot for a 2012 MacBook Pro, and we sped it up quite a bit by allowing it to have a lot more free RAM. Because you have to remember, at four gigabytes, it was, uh, memory was being used at about two and a half gigabytes, which only left 1.5 gigabytes, but it also caches some of the available RAM in order to prefetch information or keep the system running a little bit better, and it was basically maxing out at four gigs. So now we have roughly four gigs of RAM available at all times. Yeah, this is so much better. But that's it, that's it, super simple. Upgrading a MacBook from 2012 is super easy. So that's about it, it's ready to go. I just have to put the screws back in the bottom cover and give it back to my buddy. Older MacBooks, man. I wish they were all this serviceable and easy to work on. If you like that video, give me a thumbs up. Maybe consider using my Amazon affiliate links down below. I'll link some of the stuff I got off of Amazon to do this project, as well as you can hit the notification icon to get notified when I make new videos. And just leave me a comment. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know if you've had any uh, problems with your MacBooks or what you've done to overcome problems or what program you use to clone your software. I'm gonna get out of here. I've got other stuff to work on, including that Dell pre-built, which you'll be seeing a video on next, as well as my personal system, which is getting its like fourth or fifth change in two weeks, hopefully for the last time. And as always, I'll talk to you later.